Hey, happy Monday, everyone. Spring break for some of you, just another Monday for the rest of you. Uh, my name is Rich Schmidt, lead pastor at Living Hope Community Church in Valparaiso, Indiana. Thank you for joining us for this time of daily prayer. I'd like us to start with this prayer today. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray that you would so guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Uh, the section of scripture that we're given today includes a favorite story of mine about a, a blind man that Jesus heals and all that follows after that. Uh, it's written almost like a comedy as the story progresses, and frankly, it makes me laugh just about every time I read it, but it deals with a serious subject, and it doesn't start out funny at all. Uh, it's found in John's Gospel, chapter 9, starting with verse 1. As he went along, talking about Jesus, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground made some mud with saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. So this is the miracle uh, here in the first seven verses of the chapter. And then the next 34 verses are all the fallout. Uh, and that's where some of the comedy comes in. And we'll look at that tomorrow, I think. Uh, but today, let's just go back to the beginning to a situation that I imagine some of you can relate to, suffering through no fault of your own. This man was born blind. And as Jesus and his disciples walk past and notice him, the disciples start to talk about him right in front of his face, wondering, is it his fault or his parents' fault that he was born blind? Which is it, Rabbi? I mean, someone must have sinned, right, for things to be this bad? They get this idea from Scripture, from the book of Exodus, the book of Deuteronomy, where God is laying out uh, for his uh, his people, Israel, as he's um, rescued them from slavery in Egypt and taking them into the promised land, he says to them, look, you have a choice in front of you now for the life that's to come. You can choose to obey me, worship me, follow my plan, and all will be well. I will bless you. I'll give you this land. You'll have abundant crops. You'll have long lives, all the rest. Or you can choose not to obey me, and he lays out what the consequences of that will be. He says, you've got two paths, all right? A path for blessings and a path for curses, a path that leads to life and a path that leads to death. And so he encourages them, please choose life, choose the right path. So then they thought, okay, well, if you're suffering, if you're not experiencing God's blessings, then, well, you must be on the wrong path. Or, or maybe your parents got onto the wrong path and, and your suffering is a consequence for their actions. We, we don't know who, but somebody must have done something wrong to deserve this, right? And that's the question that Jesus' disciples are asking. It's the same question that Job's friends were asking. You know, what did you do, Job, to deserve all this disaster? You must have done something. And it's the question that some of you might be asking. You know, what did I do to deserve this? Now, it's true, of course, that sometimes we bring disaster on ourselves, right? I mean, we abuse our bodies in various ways, and our health suffers for it. We abuse the people around us in various ways, and our relationships suffer for it. You get the, where I'm going with this, right? Uh, we reap what we sow. We harvest what we plant. Some of us have planted plenty of seeds that then have sprung up in all sorts of negative consequences. But that's not always the case, is it? I mean, apparently it wasn't for this man. You know, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind. And Jesus says, neither. Now, this isn't because of anybody's sin. This is simply an opportunity for God's work to be put on display. God's redemptive, restoring work bringing healing and wholeness, life and beauty. He says this is an opportunity for God's goodness to shine in this person's life. And so Jesus makes some spit mud and smears it on the guy's eyes and then tells him to go wash it off in a certain pool, the pool of Siloam. Now, did Jesus ask him if he wanted to be healed? <laughs> if he wanted to have spit mud smeared on his face? No. Now, Jesus does that sometimes, right? I mean, he asks people, you know, what would you like me to do for you? Would you like to get well? But he doesn't do that this time. I mean, I kind of feel for this guy, this, this blind man in the story. He has no agency at all up to this point. 
He was born with this blindness condition. Nothing he could do about that. Uh, people are talking about him right in his face as if he's not even there. And now Jesus, um, you know, he has no say over what Jesus is doing to him, for him. Jesus just smears mud on his face, tells him to wash. And, and here now, finally, is where this man finally has some agency. He can finally do something about his situation. He's given some responsibility. Jesus invites him to do something, to go and wash. And Jesus doesn't even say, go and wash and you will be healed. He just sends him off to wash the mud off his face. And this man trusts Jesus enough to do what Jesus tells him to do. He goes and washes and comes home seeing. Each of us have this choice when we go through suffering, when we face difficulties. Will we trust Jesus? Will we trust that he knows what he's doing, that he knows uh, what he's talking about, that he knows where he's leading us? You know, Jesus knows suffering right? He suffered death on the cross and lived to talk about it. You know, will we trust him to lead us when we suffer? I like that they gave us uh, Psalm 31 today. Uh, it's an expression of trust in God in the midst of trials, and even Jesus found it helpful when he suffered on the cross. Listen to the first few verses. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God recognize that that last part? Into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus says those words from the cross not long before he dies. He entrusts himself to his heavenly father, to his faithful God, his rock of refuge, his strong fortress who saves him. And God does save Jesus. He doesn't keep him from dying that shameful death on the cross, but he saves him through it. You know, death doesn't end his story. You know, death is defeated and Jesus lives again. And sometimes that's what God does for us too. I mean, sometimes we trust him. We go and wash and come home seeing. Other times we trust him. We go and we die and trust that just like Jesus, we will live again. So we don't always know why we suffer. We can't always pinpoint a reason, a cause, a person to blame. But suffering is always an opportunity for God to be at work in our lives in some way, whether he pulls us out of our suffering and relieves our suffering or leads us safely through our suffering, giving us grace and strength for that difficult journey. We have the opportunity to put our trust in Jesus and to see God work. Let's pray. God, you know better than any of us how difficult this is for us, how difficult it can be for us when life gets hard, when we can't see a way forward. But today, would you help us to sense what that blind man sensed, that you have noticed us, that you see us and our situation, and that you're ready to help us. So please, help us to see that our situation, our difficulty, our suffering is an opportunity for your good work to be displayed in our lives. God, we pray that you will deliver us. Be our rock, our refuge, our fortress, our deliverer. We are trusting in you. Into your hands, I commit my spirit. Whether you step in to stop our suffering and lift us out of it, or whether you step in to strengthen and uphold us through it until we're safely on the other side of it, would you help us to trust you every step of the way? God, you know our fears, our anxieties, our hesitations, our lack of faith. You know, help us to trust you, to, to have faith in you, to do what you invite us to do. It reminds me of this prayer that we have prayed together so many times. Uh, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
And then let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, before we go, I want to make sure that you know that uh, today is World Water Day. And I would love for you to participate with us in this year's Global 6K for Water. It'll happen this May. Uh, you can learn more about it by going to valpo6k.com. And I would encourage you to do that today, to not wait until May, but today to go to valpo6k.com. There you'll find there's a $15 off promo code that's good just for the next couple of weeks. If you want to join the team and walk or run with us, either here in Valparaiso or uh, on your own in your neighborhood, wherever you might be, or if you just want to make a donation, you can hit the support us button and do that as well. Today, starting at 7 a.m., uh, all of those donations are being matched by some very generous donors up to $500,000. So again, if you go to valpo6k.com, it takes you right to our team's fundraising page, and you can join our team or support us right there. Uh, but now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may it be with us all. Amen.